Hello, I'm a minute early. I know I'm a minute early. I'm just trying to arrange my COVID scandal so that you can see it. Um, I'm going to put myself, uh, grow the thing so it goes like, oh, come on. <sighs> I'm trying to <laughs> arrange the Kobe Scandons uh, so that, oh, no, screw up. Oh, no, come back. <sighs> Sorry. Let's just get rid of all of this and get ready. Oh, there we are. Sorry, I was got lost there for a minute. Um, you're very welcome, everybody. I'm, I'm, I wanted to arrange my... I can't see until I go live whether what you can see. So I'm just <laughs> trying to arrange my copious scandal so that you can see it. Uh, yes, well, never mind. Uh, that's a nice idea, but I don't think it's going to work. Um, I could swing it around my neck like this. Anyway, you're all very, very welcome to the Common Farm Flowers live at five. We do this for the club members um, most weeks during term time. And what happens with the club is the clubbers give me ideas to talk about. They say, can we have a session on this or that or the other thing? And we set ourselves up. And during the few days before the live, the clubbers send me their questions. They can send them in all sorts of different ways, wherever they see a reminder of it, Instagram here, on YouTube, all over the place. I get email questions, all sorts. Anyway, um, and then we have a little chat and it's always really really good fun and we have people from all around the world so you're very welcome uh and i can see that people are pinging pinging yes i'm still live can you see me all right everybody hello from michigan hello from indiana <laughs> i love this we get people the only people who tend not to join in live are all the way from uh, new zealand and australia because it's four o'clock in the morning so understandably, they catch up later, but they're always the lives are always here for catching up with later. Obviously, if you're a club member and it's a club member's live, it goes into the club section. But we thought we'd do a sort of tester so you can all see what it's like to join in with a live here. So we've only got till uh, quarter past. So I love it. We've got Maine, we've got Kerry, we've got the Netherlands, we've got all over the place. So um do type in any questions as you think. We've got 15 minutes. And then in 15 minutes, I'm going to ping over and we're going to do our normal clubbers. I can see some of you are here. I, the clubbers have their own stickers, so I can see who are clubbers and who aren't. Um, hello, Sacramento, Judy John in California. Um, I can see the clubbers. So a fifth, quarter past clubbers, we're going to ping over and we're going to do our normal live with all the questions that you've got about running beds, uh, bed management, not, it sounds as though you're running a brothel, but it's not. It's obviously flower bed management. So we've got lots of questions about Kobe scandals. I think I get questions about Kobe scandals all year round because I think sometimes people are a bit nervous of, the, of it. Um, and sometimes it can be fiddly to germinate. Uh, and then you've got to keep it going through all the frost because it's very tender. And then you've got to get it out there planted in time because it takes quite a long season before it flowers. So you're, 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 you are juggling things a little bit with copious scandals. You do not need masses. If any of you have seen my copious scandals uh, stand up the field, they are, I think there are 10 a maximum of 10 plants, five purple on the south side and five white on the north side. Um, and they are pulling the trellis that they're growing up down. They get very, very heavy. So it's if you're going to grow Kobe scandons, please plant them somewhere where they're not going to pull the thing down, pull what they're growing up down. I wouldn't grow them up netting. They're too heavy. I wouldn't grow them up... Um, I wouldn't grow them anywhere where they can scramble over another plant and kill it because once they get going, they really get going. Anyway, um, and we've got North Yorkshire. 
Yes, I know, Judy. But, you know, bed management, brothels. So uh, I'm going to answer your questions first, and then I'll talk more. Woo I love Kobe's scandal. It is not what I would call a cash crop for me, but I love, I just think that's so beautiful. Um, do you know? Oh, I've locked all the doors so that Fabrizio can't come in, which means I can't let the dog out. The, Oh, T Kate, come here. Come on. We'll let her out. Teeks. Come on, stop it. Come on. Come on. You're going out, you have to go out. Oh. Right. Um the reason, sorry, my dog is uh, very much part of my YouTube channel. Um, the reason that the Kobe Scanlons are exactly this size is so that in their native Central America, they are exactly the size of the shoulders of the bats which pollinate them in Central America. That is exactly the width of the shoulders of the bats. Isn't that exciting? Um, right, let's answer your questions. Um, somebody called Sewing My Flower Dreams. Hello. Nice to see you. Um, wants to know why her purple flowers drop. Well, I tell you why. They hold on really nicely until they have been pollinated. And once they've been pollinated, they're done. So the flowers drop off. Uh, so it's a good sign when your flowers drop off because it means that there's that they are feeding your environment. And there are bees, butterflies, birds, all sorts of people who are using them for food and nutrition. So that's why they fall off. Um, you want to cut them, therefore, if you're going to have them as a cut flower. So the next question is, at what point would you cut them? And here we have this one. OK, look, I can hold them all up together. I cut the whole vine. <laughs> so you see... Here are three, whoop, three purples. Darkest purple is most mature. Middle purple, not mature yet. Light purple, just beginning. So if I were cutting them to have them in an arrangement, I would cut when the flower is sort of this color, the pale color, and it will mature. And at this stage, it's going to get pollinated and fall off. Uh, but so that's about the t that's that's the level. If you're going to do an arrangement that's going to last five days or something, I'd, I'd cut them at that level. And if you're cutting white ones, you can tell. Look at look at this one. So you can see it's really fresh and young, and you can see that the stamens are pale. They haven't ripened. Whereas this is the middle one, and you can see the stamens are darkening a bit. Do you see? So that's revving up to be pollinated. Whereas this one, the stamens are dark, dark. They kind of ripen. You can see the color. They get darker, literally darker. Um, and so if you're looking at the white ones, I've got quite an old white one here which I will show you. You see how the dark, the dark stamens compared to much fresher, greener, lighter. So this is, I would cut this one. This one's over and is about to drop its, drop its bell shaped head. There you are. Um, so they will drop. Uh, they won't stay on forever. It's an annual. Um, and what it's trying to do, all annuals are trying, what they like to do is they germinate, grow, flower, set seed and die. And so they want to get rid of the flowers. They've been, been pollinated. They want to get on to the next job, which is set seed. There you are. I hope that answers your question. Laura Bartlett imagery. Do the flowers start creamy and get more purple? Yes. Well, they do. Here's the, 
there's your first one, second one, and third one. So youngest, middle-aged, old. They do. That's for the purple ones. The white ones come out quite white. That's a bud, a white bud. And that's the white ones come out really creamy. And um, the foliage on the white is a really zingy good green, which I really like at this time of year. So that's the white one foliage. And you can see underneath the purple foliage is a darker stem and has darker veining, which actually for dramatic effect in late summer floristry is really useful. So depending on what your floristry project is, you can go for the pale zingy green or this purple veining, which is on the purple variety. And then when this is a bud, that's what they look like when they are about to come out, when it's just developing. I tell you what, they're very dramatic and quite exciting. Mrs. B's Garden. Oh, I do hope you're here. It'd be so nice to see you. Mrs. B's Garden, if you're on Instagram, I highly recommend you follow Mrs. B's Garden. She grows more kinds of tomatoes than you can shake a stick at. And my goodness, that is a garden. Um, anyway, uh, she's very nice. Um, and she says that she's got loads of foliage on her Kobe scandons and no flowers. And she's not the only person to have had that problem. And I suspect what happens in that case is that because they're so tender, people tend to sow them quite late. And so I expect, Mrs. B's garden, that your Kobe scandons will flower. It's just not there yet. And it's possible that you sowed it because they're tender and they're listed as a tender annual. So, you know, understandably, you would sow them quite late. Um, but mine were sown in February because they do take a really long season. And, oh, my goodness, I've got to keep an eye on the time. Uh, they take a really long season. And uh, so I sow mine on a hotbed in February and protect them massively from the frost. Uh, Gwen and Denise, um, the books and the RHS website say to grow in full sun. Yes, they do. Uh, uh, but hers are in full sun and no flowers on them. Uh, but the one that she's got against the north facing wall is flowering like mad. Should we not believe the books? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good question. Um, I suspect that uh, the north facing is getting quite a good dose of sun either early in the morning or late in the afternoon. One. Two, it's possible that the one that you've got north facing was sown a bit earlier than the one that's in full sun by the greenhouse. Uh, maybe you had two, two batches. Uh, or three, I believe really, really strongly that we garden by instinct. 80% of our gardening is by instinct. And only when we don't know what to do about something should we look it up. So, um, yes, uh, believe the books, but equally with a pinch of what's actually happening in your garden because you know it isn't always the same mandy dagnall can i grow cobia scandens in a gently heated greenhouse over the winter uh, you've got a greenhouse bed and you want to put something in it um and it's too warm for ranunculus and a bit airless i wouldn't because if it's successful it will take over your whole greenhouse one and uh it'll be a jungle in there and you won't be able to get in but I think also it will get frost nipped unless it's a really, really, uh, unless you can keep the frost completely away, um, you'll probably get frosted. Uh, and three, well, anyway, two, one and two, that's enough. Uh, but yeah, I would sow them in February. I wouldn't try and keep them going over winter. If you're in a warmer place than we are, you know, if you might be in, um, I don't know, if you're in Central America, then they might grow, they'd grow as a, a perennial. Um, but I think um, and most elsewhere, not so much. Um, Sazzle, when to sow, and which is my favourite colour, and we're going to have to hurry up and finish because it's quarter past and we've got the club members live at five. But anyway, Sazzle, um, my favourite colour is the white one. Um, I love the white one, but weirdly... I find the purple one more useful. So I love the white one to look at, but the purple one is more of a, because it's a sort of more seasonal color uh, in floristry, it works better generally. So um, 
you know, as usual with me, six of one and half a dozen of the other. Um, anyway, hello from everywhere. I'm going to whiz through which, what's the best way to trellis vines to make them easy to harvest for wholesale sale? Uh, plant them far apart <laughs> um, and control them. Um, do you save your seeds from year to year? No, because they don't flower. They don't have time uh, to set really good quality seed. Um, and so I haven't had any pinky ones. Um, could you cut them in their bud stage? Yes. Would they still open? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Try. Um, they will colour up after being cut. Yes, they will. I brought some seeds. I'll be hoping they grow up a very large tree sub. Oh, how exciting. Hello from New Zealand. Yay, you're up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, wow. I'm very impressed. Uh, spring, alternative Sacobia. I can't go there. Oh, yes, of course. It's against, it's a, um, you can't, I don't. Uh, alternative Sacobia. I'll think about it. I, we've got to go. Um, they sometimes are fiddly to germinate. They like heat underneath to germinate. And I would start them in February if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or um, really not too late winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, I would let them, uh, I really think I would let them go and try again, but start them in the earlier next year. Anyway, hello, Kendall Cumbria. Oh, very close to my back where I come from. Uh, tea cake's always stealing the show. Yes, she is. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie grew one for the first time and sewed it on Boxing Day. It's just regarded as a flower. How fantastic. How do I use it in floristry? Really, mostly, I use it really for the foliage because the stems are quite short. So they're great in a posy, but this is, I can hang, the. it's incredibly tough. So you can have this going all the way down your table and barely any in water. I and mean, you really hardly need to put it in water. It's so tough. Um, so that's what I really use it for. It's for, for wild and wonderful at this time of year. Thank you very much for coming everybody. I'm really sorry I'm gonna to have to end the stream because the clubbers are waiting over on the other one. But I hope you've been inspired and uh, we might do another little bonus live at five at some point. Um, this is to celebrate having 300, now 307 members of my club. Yes. So uh, thanks very much for coming, everybody. And I'll see you all very soon. And clubbers, <laughs> ping over to the club one. <laughs> Bye. Whew.